BBC Two got the go-ahead from the government to move into colour in 1966. We'd been asking for years. The Americans and the Japanese were already doing so. The Germans were busy with their preparations. We wanted very much to be the first in Europe. But there were all kinds of problems, not the least of which was the fact that we had hardly any colour equipment. One studio, one outside broadcast unit, and a machine for showing colour film. How could you start a colour television service with that? The colour studio might sound good, but we had no way of taping colour at the time, so at the very best we could only hope to get one programme, say half an hour, a day from that. But we had a couple of tricks up our sleeves. I knew of a long backlog of colour documentaries, particularly about travel and natural history, that had only been seen in black and white. So we started a new Sunday evening series called The World About Us. Its descendant, the natural world, is still running. And for the opening week, I chose a sensational film about volcanoes. That was highly colourful with all that red-hot lava, and it had an additional advantage. We knew everybody would be gunning for us about colour quality. How accurate was it? Well, even the critics, we reckoned, wouldn't know what shade of red volcanic lava should be. One could stand at a distance of six yards from the lava flow, at four yards, one's eyebrows began to scorch, which does not smell very nice. Another step, and the radiant heat would produce serious burns. Never before had we seen a torrent of lava flowing at this speed, 25 miles an hour. Rarely had we ventured so far beyond the human realm. Viewers and BBC technicians recall their earliest memories of colour television. I've hinted that the future of television lies in bringing entertainment to you from anywhere in the world. We'll give you a taste of that tonight. But here at home, we can capture a brief glimpse of the future. Now, you've seen one of these, often unintentionally. It's the television camera that's been looking at me all through the show. But you've never seen this. It's a colour television camera. Nobody can say when colour television will come. The system and the wavelengths to be used are matters for international discussion and for decisions at government level. But against the day when colour is introduced, the BBC and the radio industry are building up their knowledge and experience. I wonder how many times on television you've heard somebody say, if only you could see the colour. <laughs> As a kid growing up in the 50s, uh, I was obsessed with television, and the idea of colour television was just out of this world. I remember every Saturday morning, they would run a test colour transmission. We could only see it in black and white, of course, but I think I probably watched it 150 times. I had some friends of ours from the local school. They, they won the football pool. And one of the things they bought was a brand new television set, which looked like a huge mahogany freezer. And the top opened up, there was the screen. And then added to that was this colorizer, which was sort of three stripes in primary colors. And they would put that over the screen, and you would get a strange color effect. And that was my first experience of color television. I suppose you find us all very changed. No. I'm afraid it's I who've changed. And I didn't know it. No, it's us. You changed us by what you did. We couldn't remain the same after that. Well. I can remember about buying a coloured television. It was a white Murphy and it had the control knobs on the top. I preferred that because I thought it spoiled the picture having them on the front. And uh, my next door neighbour was very envious. She wanted to know whether we bought the television weekly or whether we paid outright for it and I wouldn't answer her. We now present from Studio A, Alexandra Palace. Another program in our series of experimental transmissions in colour. This green in the shadows on the left, is that shading? Yes, we'll have to change the green cube tomorrow. You mean today, don't you? There were huge men in white coats with biros and screwdrivers in their top pockets going around fiddling with everything because the colour camera was a sort of Neanderthal object at first. It shambled about. 
I like, oh, I see a red, whoa, and I see a blue, you see, and it, everything went bright blue and bright red. And even though it had a bit of black in it, the camera said, I but it's red to me, it said. <laughs> so we had to reduce everything. We had to knock back the colour. The major problem we had was the cameras couldn't handle like the contrast range. The black and white minstrel show, which we tried to tackle because it was a high contrast situation, didn't come out quite as it had been intended. It was disappointing that we hadn't learned enough to be able to handle it in those early days. I think that we really couldn't rely on anything. All the cameras had an inherent shading in them. Some would have a pale green, some would have a pale pink or a magenta sh shading in them. And these would have to be um, tweaked out by the engineers. To actually uh, reproduce flesh them became the most important thing to do. The early colour cameras used to turn the hair green. Another problem we had was where you've got backlight and it was shining through men's ears. It showed up all the blood vessels, and the ears looked rather red. Uh, the solution to this one was uh, ear makeup. How to look your best on color television. This advice is intended to ensure that color television does justice to your appearance and does not detract from what you have to say. Men. Very pronounced striped or checked patterns are best avoided. If you can shave shortly before coming to the studio, it will minimize the risk of five o'clock shadow, which is accentuated by color. It may sound frivolous, but it is better not to have a drink immediately before transmission. It will heighten your color noticeably. Women. Smooth, very shiny fabrics will not flatter you and may cause technical difficulties. If you use a darker foundation than your skin tone, please ensure that your neck and hands match as well. On uh, July the 1st, we start colour launching. And those will be uh, advertised programmes, again in our normal monochrome schedule, who have suddenly had colour added to them. And they will be our documentary films, uh, Wicker's World, for example, Man Alive, uh, The Virginian, and also, most importantly, outside broadcast. I remember I was standing at this bus stop and it happened to be next to a television showroom. I looked in the window and there was this colour television and we were just completely dumbfounded. We were saying, look, the grass, the grass, it's green. It really is green. It's unbelievable. And uh, we missed our bus. We were just so desperate to see a bit more of this stuff. I can't remember when I got a colour TV set, but I do know that I, for the first couple of weeks, I just sat and watched it for the pleasure of watching television in colour. I would watch anything. It was just riveting. With this smart circle, somehow managed to achieve the quality of a Victorian poster. Pink, silvers, midnight blue, and an extraordinary greeny yellow transformed a banal, often boring entertainment into what most of us believed we felt about the circus as children. The spangled ladies looked unbelievably glamorous. All my contemporary reservations about trained animals, my conviction that the circus was tired and moribund, vanished because of the colour. For some reason, I got the impression colour wasn't going to be all that good. But it was. It was a beautiful picture. It was like a colour a color photograph. The kingfisher, the most beautiful bird in Britain. His back is a dazzling metallic blue, or it can look emerald green, depending on the light. Underneath, he's warm chestnut orange. I've got a great surprise for you. It's a 
television. It's in color. Oh, guys are coming home, present. Oh, and that smash it. Here. But don't need a 21 inch screen, they come in 23. <laughs> In the mid 60s, I, I sort of see in black and white just general images, and then it sort of starts going colour towards the, the late 60s, early 70s. Um, there's this the hippie thing happened. <laughs> I thought it was the most wonderful experience of my life. Engines on five, four, three, two. All engines running. Once commit, lift off. We have lift off. This was a color that was a transmitted color. And it was like coming from behind the screen. So it glowed very beautifully. And it was quite jewel-like in a sense, and we're all excited by it. And it made a great difference to our lives. 